This question is all about mechanics, and in particular, it's going to use conservation of momentum. So in this question, we're told that we have a stationary nucleus of polonium-210, and we're told that it undergoes alpha decay, so we have some alpha particle, and it forms a lead-206. So the question is, and they tell you, by the way, the alpha particle has a speed v, and we're asked to find the speed of the lead. Now, I think if you looked at the different choices, like A, B, C, D, that it might get overwhelming. So let's just let's just sort of put our heads down and kind of just try to solve this. So I think, first of all, when you look at this stuff, it really helps to know what's going on. Um, what is an alpha particle? You have to remember that. You have to know that an alpha particle is actually helium-4, with a lower number of 2 here. But the no lower number isn't so important. It's the top number that's important. That's its nucleon number. Right? That's the amount, uh, that's the number of um, neutrons plus protons. So what's going on there? Well, we're going to have, because this is stationary, and then this thing here goes flying, maybe it helps to do sort of a diagram here. So I'll try to just do a drawing of it. So maybe I'll draw that in, I don't know, purple. So this right here, we just have polonium, 210, and that's it. It's not moving, because they're told it's stationary. And if you're going to do that, you're going to have to compare that to what's going on over here. We're here now. We have an alpha particle. Maybe it flies off that way at a speed v. This is the alpha particle, right? This is the helium-4. And we have this other particle, this polonium. No, sorry, lead, Pb-206. By the way, did you have to know it's called Pb? No, you could call it, you know, lead. It doesn't matter. I'm just trying to label it properly, but you didn't have to. This right here, this is the one I want. I want to know that v. We can call this an original V. We can call this, I don't know, like VPB, I guess we can call it. You know, that's what we're looking for. So here, VPB. And this is V alpha. So this is what we're looking for. We want to know this. But if you notice, then we start off with this right here, not moving. And the way to get from something, you know, before and then something after is to use this idea of conservation of momentum. That the total momentum before, so P total, you know, before, so I put momentum total before, that's going to equal total momentum after. That's going to be sort of the only thing that's sort of magically allowed to sort of cross this line of before and after. So if I sort of consider that, this would be like some sort of before and after situation here. This is before, over here is after. So because of that, let's figure out, well, because it's not moving initially, you can then state that uh, P before equals zero because it doesn't have any speed. Therefore, the total momentum also equals zero. Well, if the total momentum before is zero and it's conserved, that means afterwards the total momentum is also equal to zero. That's how you got to there. So now, how do we do this? Well, we have to just take a look at that and say, well, we know that these masses right here are going to be... Um, uh, moving in opposite directions probably. So let's maybe then figure out how we do this. Remember this equation for momentum. Remember that momentum, P, is equal to mv. You need to know that one. That's momentum. Now why do we do this? Because now we can actually calculate the momentum. So let's do it. So we could do the momentum for the uh, lead. We can say that's going to be mpb vpb um, and we know that that momentum plus the momentum of the alpha particle, we know that all that's going to equal zero. That's what we know. Now we know it's equal to zero because that was the total momentum. See, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to find the total momentums here. Um, now, the speed of the alpha, we actually are just going to call that um, just V. So that'll be nice. So we have M alpha like this. Um, and we have to figure out all this stuff here. So we have P, B, V, P, P. And if we want to do this, we can get V, P, P. We can get that by itself. We can say it's equal to, let's see, it's going to be negative M alpha V. Because I can move this whole thing. I can move this piece over to the right. So I get that. But of course I moved it over to the right. So um, I've still got the mass hanging out here. Uh, so I want to get rid of that mass. So what do I do? I have VPB then equals minus M alpha times V over the mass of lead. Now all I got to do is put in this stuff and I get my answer. So in this case here, what do I get? 
Well, I can put in what I know here. Uh, don't mind the negative, it's just because they go opposite directions. The negative itself, I mean, we don't really care. We just want to know the speed, not the velocity. They're asking for the speed, so that's why we can ignore the direction. So it's going to be uh, the mass of the alpha. And all we know, well, since it's got four nucleons, we can say that's four over a mass of the lead, which is 206, times the original V. That's why the answer was D. Right, it was 4 over 206V. That was the final answer. Yes.